Fishing News is brought to you by Navionics, Okuma, Yozuri, Evinrude, Lama Glass, and the Star Island Yacht Club in Montauk, New York. Hey, Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine. I want to wish you a happy October. I, I cannot believe we are here in the 10th month already. I mean, the fishing's great in October, don't get me wrong, but it's unfortunately a uh, sign that the end of the open water season is uh, far closer than the beginning is now. So, nonetheless, it also means the October monthly issue of the Fisherman Magazine is out right now. Uh, it's packed, of course, with a slew of great fall features. We got articles on driving the beach, uh, seeking giant striped bass in the surf. Let's see, late season panfish secrets, hunting albies, and much, much more. You can check out the October issue today on your local newsstand, in uh, your mailbox, or of course at thefisherman.com right now. And of course, with any one subscription to the magazine, uh, you get access to all three digitally. So that includes New England, Long Island Metro New York, as well as New Jersey, Delaware Bay. So we have got you covered up and down the East Coast with that subscription. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna start off with some bottom fishing talk this week and with black fish season opening Connecticut next Thursday. Many of my local friends have been talking tog. I've been getting emails, text, phone calls, the whole deal. Uh, and to kick off the fall black fish season here in Connecticut, uh, Black Hall Outfitters has their annual Togtober tournament coming up, which begins on Friday, October 11th, with a captain's meeting at the shop in Westbrook. Now, the captain's meeting is required for anyone getting in on the Calcutta. If you're just participating in the primary tournament, you don't have to attend, but it is a good idea to attend. I got goodie bags for, I think it's the first 50 participants. Um, Definitely want to check that out. Fishing begins, however, on Saturday morning. That's October 12th and concludes Sunday afternoon, the 13th. Now this year's winner, it's a little different from the past years. The winner for King of the Tong is going to be crowned by the angler who enters the three heaviest combined fish. So your three biggest fish caught over the two day tournament. And obviously weighed in at either of the shops will get you the top prize and you will be crowned tank king of the tog. So you want to get more details on the tournament, head on over right now to thefisherman.com. And for those of you who have the itch really bad in the meantime in Connecticut, or of course if you're up north of us, season is open in Rhode Island and Massachusetts and there's been some big black fish being caught. Uh, case in point, got an 11.68 pounder caught by Cameron Thomas of Crafty One Customs in Portsmouth, Rhode Island. Now word is that the fishing has pretty much been shallow as it usually is throughout the summer and early fall months, but I did also kind of hear that the fish moved out a little bit deeper um, after last week's weather, wind, and so on that we had, but nonetheless, it's still shallow. Uh, you know, you're not hitting those 50, 75 foot depths quite yet. You can still stay in close to shore. Also got some pictures from Captain Jason Colby, Little Sister Charter, sailing out of Westport, Massachusetts. He's been getting some big tong just a short ride out from the Westport River. Um, some of the trips have been excellent, while some of them have been just good, which still is great in my book. Um, he's also been starting off a lot of these trips in the river, casting chunks and eels um, before the blackfish trip, and he's been getting in some pretty good action on striped bass and bluefish, so that makes for a pretty good package deal on the day. Let's see, moving along. Looking uh, to that blackfish uh, season starts here in Connecticut next week. Um, I finally, if you've been following along a little bit on my uh, Facebook or Instagram pages, I finally got my Old Town Predator kayak fully rigged and ready to go. Now the reason it took a little bit of time, I gotta thank a few guys that helped me out on this. Of course, um, Black Hall Outfitters, the old line shop, Paul and I have been working together on this. but. The reason it took some time is we've been shooting some videos, doing the rigging. We got this thing fully tricked out. We got a brand new Hum and Word fish finder. We got yak lights. We got a ton of awesome accessories from Yak Attack. Uh, still working on transporting, trying to uh, track down a trailer for myself, but this thing is tricked out to the nines. It's going to be a kick butt fishing machine. Hopefully I'll have it on the water uh, fishing wise by next Thursday for that black fish opener. Like I said, still working on tracking down a trailer to uh, transport it around. We're Worst case scenario, I'm going to throw it up on the roof of my truck and drag it out there just to get out on the water. But stay tuned, coming up in January, I'm going to start unveiling those rigging videos. Again, 
uh, Black Hall Outfitters, Yak Lights, Yak Attack accessories. They all hooked up with some great equipment. Paul and I put it together, so real psyched to get that on the water. Stay tuned for some more content from that boat this fall and beyond. And let's see, sticking with the bottom fishing theme, Captain Greg of the Black Hawk has been putting his client on a very consistent catches of black sea bass and big old porgies. They've also, though, along the way, when they're bottom fishing, getting some striped bass and even some cod mixed in already. Now, keep, worthwhile, keep in mind that um, in Connecticut waters, through uh, the, well, for porgies, you got the four higher bonus season, which runs until the last day of October, which goes uh, gives you 50 fish per angler. And black sea bass for higher bonus goes right through to the end of the year in Connecticut, which again only on the four higher boats gets you seven fish per angler. These are increased from the regular private shore anglers, so make sure you're up on those regs, of course, if you go out. But it's a great time to get out on the party boats for some extra fish. Also heard from Fisherman Magazine subscriber Tony Renato. He checked in this week as he has been targeting black sea bass off of Watch Hill. Now in a recent outing, he was fishing with his buddy Ken Kelly. And they got a pile of black sea bass in those waters up to about 20 inches. Um, he said he went home, took a couple of them, threw them on the grill, and they cooked up great. Now that's one way I haven't tried sea bass yet. I, I love eating sea bass, one of my favorite local fish, but I gotta try them whole on the grill. Perhaps that next one I get, that's where it's gonna end up. And Tony finished off his email saying they stopped in at the Pocketuck River on on the, at the end of the day, they threw tins to a load of like two to four or five pound bluefish, basically as many as they wanted to catch. So there's some uh, small blues in that area if you're interested. And speaking of sea bass and bluefish, got an email from Jeffrey Downs. He said he was jigging for biscuits inside Long Island Sound when some big blues started jumping on those jigs. Now, um, bluefish seem to kind of take a little while to move into Long Island Sound this year, but you know, once we got into that mid to late August range, they really invaded our waters. And been everything from big snappers, you know, uh, pounders up to fish, fish pushing, and a couple even exceeding that 20 pound mark. So there's some slammer blues out there to be caught in the sound. I want to see a couple of you local anglers hitting, uh, New England anglers, hitting the Dreamboat leaderboard. Uh, usually that category, last couple years anyway, has been dominated by New Jersey and Long Island subscribers. I gotta say, there's a little friendly competition between us editors, so I, I expect you guys to do me proud here and get in on the board. All right, let's see. Next up, we got a video contribution this week coming to us once again from TJ Kopecki. Thanks, Toby. Hey guys, uh, back here again at the Coles River. Uh, fishing's been really, really good in the rivers. Uh, mainly uh, fishing for striped bass right now because there's tons of bait that's been pushed up into the Coles River where I am right now. And uh, basically been using the old basic bucktail. So this is a uh, one and a half ounce bucktail. With a, with a little curly grub tail, six inch on it. Um, been doing really well with it. Um, just casting it out, let it sink a little bit. And uh, usually by the time actually you ate that three seconds, you already got a fish on. Uh, that's how aggressive the fish are right now. Um, fished in the Warren River uh, last night. Did really well there too. Uh, just a little bit tougher for fishing uh, in the eddies. There's a couple of uh, really, really strong points in the river there where it comes underneath the uh, Warren Bridge so uh, it makes it a little bit of tougher to land the fish but uh, there are some big fish in there uh, Barrington Beach still hot with bluefish Providence River still hot with bluefish right off of Connecticut light um, went out Saturday tried to get some hardtails I didn't do well not sure uh, if it was just a day again that I chose but uh, we actually didn't do well at all catching many fish at all. Uh, we did better at the dock in Patuxent Cove in Cranston. Um, we uh, caught a 34 inch uh, striper um, right on a live pogey that we snagged. Um, where there's a lot of, lot of big, big uh, adult Manhattan inside of that river now uh, that we snagged and we're using. So, uh, Mount Hope Bay, full of stripers. Full of uh, bluefish. Haven't heard any reports of any weak fish. I know there's some weak fish around. Um, other than that, everything's good, and uh, I hope uh, you all have tight lines and get out there and catch some fish. We'll catch you next week. 
All right, thanks a lot, TJ. Uh, appreciate those contributions as always. If you want to send me some, I've said it before, but in case you're a new a subscriber to the YouTube channel here with us, email me over at tlipinski at thefisherman.com. You can submit video reports. You can submit some pictures and just some catch info, whatever you want. I'm always happy to pass that info along. It doesn't have to be every single week, just when you happen to get out. So hit me up, I'll hook you up on the videos. And uh, again, I appreciate that, uh, that extra content we got. And finish up in the salt for the week. I got an email from uh, buddy Dave Bocas. He was out, actually I, I got it just before last week's video, but as you know, I was away, um, had tough sell and internet service. So I, I accidentally overlooked his email, I apologize. But Dave was fishing in Rhode Island, fishing in the surf. And uh, he said he was in a pretty good catch of fish, uh, throwing super strike darters, getting some, you know, halfway decent large schoolie to just about keeper size uh, striped bass, real consistent. And then as the tide started to drop out, he switched over to a big, uh, I think it's the two and, th or two and three quarter or three and three quarter Mike's Custom Plugs bottle darter. And I think it was on his second cast, he had a big fish take the lure, ended up being a nice 28 pounder. He stuck with the big plug for a while and that was it. That was it for the big fish, switched back over over to jigs to bottom out the tide. Got us some more schoolies. Had a really good outing though, nonetheless. That bite in South County has definitely been on. I mean, it's been primarily on the smaller fish, but it just goes to show you, you never know when those bigger girls are going to pop up. I've heard of some fish into the 30 pound class even that have been mixing in with those schoolies. So you just never know. And then last up on the freshwater side of things, um, there've been a lot of big bowfin landed in Connecticut. It seems to be the year of the bowfin. I think we've had the state record um, eclipsed at least three if not four times. I also heard of another fish that was well in excess of the state record that was caught, photographed, and released. Um, but the most recent catch was a nine pound, 29 and a half inch bowfin landed on September 15th by Jack Duguay. Now he's fishing in uh, the Glastonbury stretch of the Connecticut River, but they've really been pretty much everywhere. Um, it's a odd fish to say the least, but they are hard fighting and they're very aggressive. So it's a really cool catch, but it's just been amazing how many big bowfin have been caught this year. If you want to get a little bit more information on them, get a little news item talking about this record catch as well as some background on the fish and how they ended up here in Connecticut in the first place as they are non-native. Post it right now over at thefisherman.com. All right, well, there you have it. It's a lot going on, and uh, hopefully we covered what your plans are to fish this weekend. But of course, if I didn't happen to get to your area or what you're looking to catch, you can head over right now to thefisherman.com and get all of your reports and videos from Maine through the Mid-Atlantic. Win the incredible Steigercraft, Evinrude Lowrance Grand Prize Boat Package, and more in the Fisherman's 2019 Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. Get the details now at thefisherman.com.